Hello. Here we go. Hey, they're all popping up. There we go. <laughs> welcome, everyone. Welcome. We're just going to give it a couple of minutes because um, there's more than likely going to be a few more people joining. So before we start the proceedings, I will just let a few people in. Hello. Blank screens. Yeah. Blank screens, yes. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. it's all good. Let's just get the, uh, the chat up. Got her. Yo, yo. Hi, Josh. All right, mate. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, there's the boss man, Mr. Nominee. Yes, yes. All good. It's nice to see um, quite a few names in here that I'm not I'm not familiar with. Well, I don't think. Sorry if we have spoken <laughs> communication. So you probably probably by your artist name or something, you know. But it's quite nice to see to see new names or what I believe to be new names. It's always nice. What I do obviously love to see people we know as well. You know. Cool. What's the time? Three minutes past. So. I think people just coming in. I think we should uh, start the proceedings. So, oh, it's Frankie as well. I'm going to get caught out, and I, I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep my quick intro very, very, very short because I know that people are going to keep popping up and distracting me. So, welcome everyone to uh, masterclass with Nasha. She's going to be going through her track Contortion. It's a great dubstep track. Looking forward to this. So, for those that aren't aware of who we are. We are Education and Base. We are an online music education platform. We have lots of tutorials, video tutorials, music technology, music business, um, well-being content on our website. We also have some programs and courses as well. So you can actually get a internationally recognized qualification through one of our courses called the EBRSL Graded Syllabus. Um, we also have group mentoring programs that are very, very popular. And Nasha is one of the mentors on the dubstep group mentoring programs for both intermediate and beginner level. We'll speak a little bit more about that when the track walkthrough is done and we open up for questions. Um, yeah, please do check out our website. We have a, a lot going on. That was just the, the sort of top layer of what education and base is about. Um, so, yeah. Nasha has been with us for about a few weeks. You're new yeah, to the team. not too long. <laughs> very new to the team. Yeah, new bit. <laughs> she's, uh, she's very skilled at what she does. And um, yeah, so we're kind of introducing her to you all into our network. And yeah, I reckon without further ado, I could probably hand over to you to introduce yourself and um, introduce the session. Yeah. yeah, cool. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, hope you're all doing good. Uh I'm Holly, otherwise known as Nasha. Um, been producing probably getting on 10 years now. Um, I started doing it when I was in school, using Fruit Loops, then eventually moved to Ableton. Um, yeah, never really looked back. Um, <laughs> uh, occasionally go out and do a bit of DJing. But yeah, here to talk about the production side. So yeah, that's a bit of bit of background on me um i'm gonna be talking through uh, a track that came out last year with photo sounds um track called contortion ep is called contortion so that's where it came from <laughs> um yeah so i may as well jump straight in because i've actually got quite a bit to get through so yeah i'll share my screen with you guys Oh, yeah. And also, I forgot to mention, my name's Raf Dorenzo, a.k.a. Nerve, because <laughs> I completely forgot to mention that, by the way, just because you're thinking, well, who are you? You're talking away. <laughs> you don't even know who you are. That's me. Yeah, you'll see me about anyway. I work for Education and Bass, music producer, all that stuff. Anyway, cool. Yeah, it's just your birth name. <laughs> it's my birth name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nerve, Nerve. <laughs> right. I'll switch this off and... Uh... Hopefully it will kept the settings from before. I'll just check the um, 
stereo thing just to make sure. Yeah, all good. Stereo sound. So, can everyone see my screen? Just give us a little like yes or something. Yeah. Yep. Cool. All good. Right. That's right in the middle. I'm going to minimize that actually. All right. So, this is the full track. Um, just a lot of blocks, really. <laughs> No, I'm joking. It's not just blocks. Um, yeah, so this is the full track. Uh, I'll play it through for you guys so you can listen to it. Um, yeah, I'm sure you've probably heard it before, but for the sake of the walkthrough, you may as well give it a listen. Um, so, yeah, here we go. Can we hear that? Yep. Sick. Hang on, I don't know if I've muted myself. No, you haven't. 
No, I haven't. Cool. Right. <laughs> that's that's, uh, that's awesome. That is a sick, sick, sick tune. Oh, thank you. And I also saw some very nice comments in the chat. So quite thanks, rightfully guys. So. <laughs> and quite rightfully so, might I add. Yeah, mm. thanks very much. Um, yeah, I'll start off by uh, just giving like a kind of overview um, like of the, the arrangement and the structure. Um, so I tend to work in like 16 bar sections. Um, so as you can see here, I don't know if you can see my mouse actually. Can you see my mouse at all on the screen? Yeah, yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's there. Is it cool? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got I've put these little markers in um, just so you can you guys can see like how it's kind of structured. So you got like your intro, uh, the first drop, then there's a switch. Then there's another switch where it kind of like chills out a little bit. Then there's a breakdown in between. Then continuing on to the second drop. And then it switches again. Then it switches again. <laughs> and then it goes to the outro. So yeah, you can kind of see it's like all in even sections. Um, yeah, I guess it, it's handy for me anyway. It's handy to have this kind of structure because for ages, like, I'd struggle with structure. Um, I'd kind of just have things going everywhere. Um, and there just wasn't any structure, to be honest. Um, so I kind of learned um, every 16 bars, maybe add a little change in there. Um, also, it's handy when it comes to like mixing, like when you're DJing and stuff. Um, a lot of dubstep tracks tend to work with this kind of format. If not, then they probably do have like the 16 bar thing going on in somewhere, um, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so that's the structure of it. Um, then in between, like it, it, there's like little kind of little changes every eight bars, roughly. Maybe not every eight bars, but yeah, like here in the intro, um, you can see like. Looting the hats start coming in after eight bars. Then in the first drop, there's like after eight bars passed, the percussion comes in, uh, so on. So it's just little changes to kind of like keep keep your listener interested, um, but not changing too much so you completely lose them. So it's kind of like having having a balance of the two. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and you can hear like a bit of call and response. Um, or A and B in, if you know what that means. It's like having one instrument playing one one thing and then it gets responded to with another instrument. Um, yeah, it's, this is, I just need to find the bar. It's on, it's bar 33. Uh, so here it's, it's playing between two verses. So like the first verse you hear is the call and then the second verse you hear is the response and they kind of switch between each other. Um, yeah, I'll just let you listen to it, get an idea of what I'm on about. Yeah, so it's kind of like tension and release, A and B in, uh, somewhere, somewhere in between them, them things. <laughs> I'm not the best at explaining, sorry. That's um, right, that's right though. We actually call it, like, I look at them as like a conversation between different sounds, you know, so it's like a call and response. Yeah, so yeah, it's bang yeah. on. Mm, cool. Sure. Sick. Um, and then, yeah, I've got the flute, which comes back in on the second switch. Um, this is kind of, it kind of acts like a chorus of a pop song, I guess. It gives the listener something to relate to. Um, <clears throat> if I kept changing this melody every time, then it, it it wouldn't like have any connection to the start of the song. Um, yeah, so it's the same, it's the same melody that's played. Yeah, you want you want to have like a, a good balance between switching things up, but then also like a good balance of keeping some elements the same so it sounds like the same song. Cause I used to go too far and like just change everything and people would be like it's not like you've got three songs in one there 
So, yeah, little tip for you there if you struggle with that. Yeah, it's all about uh, that connective tissue, isn't it? So, like, just yeah. having a few a few key sounds that are kind of littered over the track at different points to sort of let the listener know that this is the same track, you know, whether it's consciously or subconsciously. But, yeah, it's a really good point. Yeah. Sorry, I think I've caught this, like, cold again. I just came out of it, like, two weeks ago, but my throat's been going a bit dodgy again. So apologies if I start choking up on you. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's a bit of an overview of the structure and arrangement. Um, going to the groups, I've got a drum group, and in the drum group, I've got a kick and snare group. Uh, I've got a snare group just for the snares because I've got I've got two in this track but sometimes I can have like maybe even like three or four snares so it kind of just keeps them keeps them all together I suppose uh, I've got a subgroup um which has only got one channel in it actually because um originally uh, it sounded completely different and I'll show you the version of it before um yeah I just I just ended up deleting all the bases out of it um just re rewriting the, the bass lines but the subgroup has just managed to survive through <laughs> um but yeah sometimes I'll have like maybe three subs that are all doing different things not playing at the same time but it just saves like automating tons um just having separate subs so when it comes to a mix down it's a bit easier to manage and deal with uh, I've got a mid bass group. It's got two mid basses, um, noise bass group. So these kind of have less mid frequency content than the mid basses. Um, they kind of act like layers of the sub. Uh, but yeah, I've separated them two just because of the characteristics of the sound, really. Um, and again, for mixing down, it just it just makes it a bit neater and a bit nicer to look at. Uh, leads just on its own. It's got no mates. Uh, <laughs> Atmos group, it's just to tidy it up, really, again. And the rise effect. So, yeah, again, just to tidy up. Um, you'll kind of, like, learn what works well for you with grouping and how you want to group things. You don't have to group things like this. It's just whatever you find best for you um yeah so that's all the groups um sorry i'm having a quick nosy at my notes because i've uh, kind of went off on a tangent a bit <laughs> um yeah so i'll start with the drums um usually when i start a track i start with the drums just to get a bit of a rhythm going um i don't always start with the drums but nine times out of ten i'll probably start with the drums <laughs> Uh, so I'll, I'll start with getting like a kick and a snare, maybe adding in a few hi-hats, but I'll actually do it so it's in a drum rack. And then later on, I'll extract the chain and then do all the processing. Um, but for whacking out a drum beat, it's much easier to do it in a, in a drum group, I find, anyway. I've got my kick. Um, sorry, there's a lot of erms. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the kick, I've just got one for this track. Sometimes I might have two, uh, usually because I like the low end of one kick, but I don't like the, the mid and high end. So that's why I would have two. But for this one, I thought it sounded all right the way it was, so I just kept it, kept it simple and I had one. Uh, so for the kick, the processing, um, just like that, and then without all the processing. Take that down. It's got a bit of a like 808 East sound to it. Um, but yeah, I kind of like to, uh, I'm, I'm not very good at synthesizing drums, so I'll just get a sample and shape it how I want it to sound. So usually I'll cut, I'll cut a bit of the tail off. Uh, I'll filter it down a bit just so it's a bit more thuddy. I like, I like kind of dark sounding kicks, not dark, um, bit more damper sounding kicks. 
so they don't like cut through too much. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll edit the the envelope. I'll filter it down a bit. Uh, then just compression. I've got a bit of distortion on there using trash. Uh, this is really handy because it's multi band, so you can uh, edit the bands separately instead of you can do it all at once, but you can also add in bands, which is super helpful for a lot of things. Um, then just a bit of EQ, really. Cutting off the high end again, uh, cutting off the, rolling off the low end, because you don't want, where did I do it? I did it at 52 hertz, so <laughs> it's up to you though. You, you, you'll work out what sounds well and what, what doesn't work very well. Um, snare group, I've got two snares. Uh, one of them's like the body of the snare and the other one's more of the like snap you can hear. Uh, so this is, that's the snappy snare. That's the like body snare, if you want to call it that. Uh, I'd usually like EQ nowadays because I made this track like over a year ago now. Um, and since then I've started like EQ in separate drum hits just because it helps like you like preventing uh, frequencies from classic clashing. That was a really hard sentence to say. <laughs> it prevents like frequencies from clashing. So, you know, there it's got the, the both hitting the same frequencies. But the end result doesn't sound too bad. So I won't worry too much about that. If it sounds all right, then don't worry too much. You can get you can get really uh dead down with that kind of stuff. But yeah, trust your ears <laughs> and it'll you'll be all right. On that, I haven't actually got, on the snare group, I've not got a lot of processing. I've just got a compressor and a bit of EQ. Sometimes I might add the trash distortion. Uh, I felt like it didn't really need it uh, for that snare in general. Uh, for the kick and snare group, I've got isotope trash on there instead. Uh, it kind of helps to just like tie the drums together. Um, yeah make them sound like they're part of the same kit almost. Um, and I've got a limiter um, just to make sure that like the drums have all got like a consistent level. Um, because I, I suppose with like genres like dubstep, uh, maybe like drum and bass and stuff, like you want to make sure that your drums are cutting through the mix. Um, and so to get around that, I'll just add a limiter um ceilings usually at like minus eight minus nine decibels um and it just like brings up the hits that aren't aren't so loud and then yeah it just makes sure they're, they're like cons consistent throughout um which i found was really helpful because before like my drums had just been all over and they'd get lost in places um just a bit of a pain to be honest <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's the kick and snare. Uh, what have I got next for you? I wanted to add quickly, if anyone's got yeah. any questions at all, um, just drop them in the chat and we'll save some time at the end for the questions. So feel free to drop the questions in and we'll, we can get to them at the end of the session. Oh yeah, so, yeah shoot, shoot the questions my way. Do what we can to answer them. <laughs> uh, hat group, uh, yeah. Just it's, this is still in a drum rack. So originally, like all my kicks, all my snares would have been in this drum group, but because I like to process them differently, I'll extract the chain. I don't know if you all use Ableton, it's like basically taking it out of the drum rack so you can add like individual processing on the channel. Um, but yeah, processing on the hats. Uh, I've got a little clipper, which is like a hard slash soft clipper. It's just distortion, really. It just makes them sound a little bit brighter and it brings them out a bit more. Uh, put a bit of saturation on them using J37, J37, whichever one it is. <laughs> uh, again, it just makes them sound a little bit, it gives them a little bit of something. I couldn't exactly tell you what the little bit of something is, but I just like putting it on hats, to be honest. Um, eyes, eyes top trash again. Just loads of distortion on my hats. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly why. Sometimes I just feel like 
they need they need a bit more you know what I mean like a lot of my old tracks like the hats just sound naff <laughs> they sound too loud but they sound naff um, and I guess my way of getting around that is just to add loads of distortion to them <laughs> Um, I've then side changed it to the kick and snare group just so it kind of like helps the kick and snare pop through the mix um, and they're not hitting at the same time well they are hitting at the same time but they're side chained so you can't hear it and uh, then what we've we got percussion it's just a uh, contact library called damage it's actually I really love it um just got some nice sound and percussion in there to be honest so I believe that these are like arpeggiated well, some of them are arpeggiated others aren't yeah um it just helps add a little bit of swing to the beat I guess um without them it, it just doesn't sound as good <laughs> it's quite a cool sound because it's it, it's it's almost acting as a rhythmic sort of sound but also yeah, yeah. melodic as well because it's got tone and reverb it's almost acting as like a sort of kind of a melody as well as a rhythmic section so it's kind of gluing the drums and the basses kind of together and it's really i think it's really important to have them sounds in there because they it, like it brings everything to life and you're right you know if you mute that off it's like wow how do i fill that void that that's yeah. then just that sounds kind of left behind you know so yeah it's yeah. really cool really I cool. think a lot of times like I used to like when you listen to those tracks that are like just really just just mainly sub bass and drums I always wonder how they fill it out and a lot of the time it's with percussion or yeah, just really like is. little hits with like delays on them and stuff mm -hmm. um still to nail that skill Hopefully soon. <laughs> well, I don't know. You've done a pretty good job of it here already. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, I suppose it's one of them where you just experiment with it. You know, you're going to get it right sometimes and sometimes it don't work. But in this track, yeah. I think it's all about having the space in a track. You know, like, you know, you kind of just touched on it when you hear a track that's just got a sub bass and, you know, maybe just a kick and a snare. There's space yeah. in there to do that. You've kind of really used them, them percussive elements really well. And then you've put a really nice reverb on there, which has just opened them up you know even more so yeah i mean if you if you if you catch it at the right time in a track where you haven't already got too many elements in mm -hmm. that will work really well but if you've already got too many elements you try and add that you kind of just might not work you know? yeah that's probably why i've not nailed it to be honest because i'm always straight in there with the mid basses like do you know what I'm, <laughs> I'm exactly the same i'm drums and then mid basses and then i'll just spend hours and days just on simps just messing around yeah. and then i end up and then I end up just chucking the tune in the recycling bin and that's nah, it job done. That. classic yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we'll have to have to pace ourselves by the sounds of it <laughs> um yeah mid bass group so i've only got two well to be fair the noise basses i'd say are more like the mid bass but you'll you'll see what i mean when the the groups differently um, with the characteristics and the sound. So this is my first mid burst, which is like, it's a bit like a stab uh, and a womp at the same time, somewhere between that. But yeah, I'll just let it, let it play. So yeah, you get what I mean. Uh, the second mid burst is just a variation of that. I've slightly altered the like, processing on it um, and it just lasts a bit it holds a bit longer so if we're playing together you'll hear that they're pretty much the same synth they're just ever so slightly different yeah and then here we've got a little bit of like it's mainly just on one note as you can see the only place where it changes note is here. Like, it's just up an octave. But yeah, it's a really tiny little bit. <laughs> um, I've used, I've, I've made it using Wavetable. Um, to be honest, I can't fault uh, in stock sims. I use them more than anything. Like I've got Serum, I've got Massive, but I always go straight to Operator or, 
our wave table just because I think they're really easy to use and you can get some really good sounds out of them. So if you haven't tried them and you've got Ableton, i definitely have a play with them. <laughs> um, I won't go too much into the bass itself just because I want to kind of get through the whole track and then if there's time I'll I'll go more into the verses if you want to if you want to know more on them. Um, again with the noise bass group they're all just like slight variations of each other or layers um, they're not like completely different from each other it's just saves you like automating tons and then getting lost in automation because that's easily done you're like what's going on here and it's like some automation learning you've forgotten you've done so I tend to, once it gets to like three or four then I'll start make I'll just duplicate it um so it saves me from getting lost because <laughs> my memory is not very good <laughs> um yeah so we've got this one just kind of layered over the sub this one again it's just a variation I'll let you have a quick peek of it <laughs> again all of these pretty much use an operator because I absolutely love it I can't get enough of it um, I'm actually using it out of FM mode but the FM mode in it is just so good. If you haven't looked into it, then definitely get to know about it because <laughs> it's it's like such a powerful synth. Um, what's this one? So it's the slightly harder version of the synth we've heard before. Um, it's just got a bit more saturation on it. Um, that's about it. <laughs> um, 808 layer. It just adds a bit of thickness. Yeah. And then the last one. They're all named very similarly, so looking at them by name, I'm just like, I'm having to remind myself which one's which. Yeah, for some reason, this sounds different to the one that got released, and I'm not quite sure what happened there. I tried getting it back, so it was close enough. I must have fiddled about with something. Um, I have a feeling it's a saturator. Yeah. I've, I could I tried getting it as similar as I could, but yeah, don't know what happened there. It's now it's now a VIP mix then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that the noise bases, the reason I call them noise bases <clears throat> is because of the erosion I've added onto them. It just adds like a noise layer. Um, without it, it just sounds like that, which still sounds all right. But it just makes it sound nice and crispy with that on, so can't complain. <laughs> yeah, erosion's a great tool. I use that a lot as well. So it's, it, it's basically a, a white noise generator, isn't it? A noise generator, yeah. which is great because you can really hone in on these specific frequencies that you want to apply to the... the um, the white noise too or the noise and you can have it in mono which is the setting you've got it on there noise or wide noise which is stereo so it's, it's really really cool it's a great yeah, great little it. tool yeah. <laughs> i end it's up very, having it on too much <laughs> well yeah i mean it's very it's very popular I mean, and yeah you know that's a good point you can easily overdo it with that as well i've i've, I've had tracks before i've listened back on my thought wow that just sounds like really fuzzy because that's quite <laughs> yeah. it's quite a popular sound at the minute you know like especially with yeah, drum and yeah. bass and stuff as well it's, it's got that kind of that fizzy sort of sound to it. But if you apply it in the right way and you do it in a certain way, it's, it's, it's really, really powerful, you know, in the way you've done it here. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. I mean, every single one of them verses has got a rush on it. So um, point proved of using it, getting it, well, getting it overused. Um, yeah, so that's the basses. Um, the lead, again, it's done with Wavetable. 
Um, I actually really like this feed. Everyone, when I first like started showing it about, everyone was like, "Is that an analog synth?" And I'm like, "No, it's literally just wavetable. Like, it has this really nice sound to it." Um, and I've had that a few times with making stuff from wavetable. Like, it's just an arpeggiated little synth. Is it? Oh, I've lost my sound. Right, there we go. Um, I'll give you a little list of that. So it's filtered out at the minute. I'll just let it play instead of jumping about. <laughs> Yeah, it's just got a really nice sound to it. And then like, I've automated it. So it brings in the low end to it when it it's hits the breakdowns. Uh, just because it has a nice low end to it. And I was like, I don't want to layer. I usually layer um, like mid basses or leads with a sub underneath it. But I thought it sounds much better when I just like automate the low end back in. So I'll let you like, have a listen to it with the low end. That, that sound is ridiculous. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. I was surprised with it. <laughs> when, that, when that came in, when the chat was playing, I was like, oh, what's that? That's, that is a sick, sick, sick sound. Yeah. yeah it's it literally really just saw, saw, saw the <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it just is. It's and the, a triangle. Uh, oh, wow. You see, and this is, yeah, it just says a lot really how... You know, I think I, I think I, I put a post up the other day. I was waffling yeah. on about it on my stories. I think probably, and I was saying about I could sit there for hours on um, trying to find a complex wavetable to use. Yeah, for sure. Whereas, you know, back in the day, all the really sick tunes were made on the basic shape waveforms: sine, square, sawtooth, and triangle. And if you can combine just, or just one with some processing, it can be very, very powerful. You know, just the way it yeah. is. It. Oh, yeah. I I that I think that's why I prefer like operator because it keeps it simple. Once I go onto like Serum or something, half the time I'm just flicking through like wave tables. <laughs> it's almost I'm like it's, it's, out, like it's too much. It's almost like that thing, yeah, yeah. you know, the whole psychology side where you give people too much and you kind of do nothing with it. But if you're if you but there, there's there's something to working with limitations, and you know I I some of the music that was made 20 years ago is still some of the best today and it stands yeah. up you know in the underground and it was made on with with limitations you know and um i think we're we're very spoiled these days but i think it's yeah. uh, <laughs> important important to not overindulge in that because it, it could end up just being too much for your head you know? yeah for sure yeah like i've given i've given serum a good few goes occasionally i'll get a good sound of it but like i said i just end up Flick through sounds. I can even do it on Wavetable. I can just flick through the other because it's got like all these banks and then it's got like tons and tons of like waveforms. And like half the time, it's just like these just do the job, you know. <laughs> Unless we're stuck in our ways with the with the basic waveforms, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's, it's true that the, the power of two sine waves detuned or frequency modulated is amazing honestly if you're if you're yeah, so advanced in them ways and you can frequency modulate one sine wave to another it can be very powerful with some filtering it was like whoa hold on and don't yeah. don't forget don't forget distortion as well we i think i think i think me and nash were both uh very much big advocates of uh, a lot of distortion in our tunes by the looks and sounds of things you know so is my is my uh camera like out or something it's uh it's been frozen for ages but how was worry. it? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> worry about it. It's fine. I thought I thought you were just doing a really, really good sort of um, steady pose, but then I realised oh, it's it? frozen. It's absolutely fine. It's all right. You know, don't I worry about try, it. I'll try... Um... Hold up. How do I even use this? Yeah, it's a lost cause. I'm not quite sure, to be honest. Uh, it's fine. It does it does catch up every now and then, and you kind of change change pose, but then it just freezes again. I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, it's gone completely now. It's all right. It's all right. We can still hear you and see the door. That's the main thing. Sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, 
Oh, is it back? I just restart the app. I'm using an app on my phone. Right, nah. I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> right, can you still hear me? Hello? Yeah, yeah, we cool. can hear you. Can you hear me? Cool. Uh, yeah, I've got an Atmos group, which has only got two channels in there. Uh, one of them's contact library again. Uh, I just, I, some things like, I feel like I'm cheating a bit with contact libraries, but yeah, I feel like they're really handy if you just need to fill a bit of a space in. Um, yeah, I, I like my main focus is, is base design. Um, so when it comes to other kind of synths, um, I like them, but I'd rather spend the time uh, focusing on something else. <laughs> uh, then we've got another one, um, which is just like a pad. In fact, I'll give you a little audition of these so you can actually you actually know what I'm talking about. It's just kind of like some atmosphere I don't know how else you, it's like wind or something and then atmos 2 is just like some descending paddy thing um also made with wave table <laughs> but this is actually using the more complex waveform so maybe we're wrong about the waveforms I don't know um I actually really liked it because it sounded like a vocal almost. Um, but yeah, it's a synth, so we love synths. Can you still hear me? It's gone very quiet. Uh, so good. So good. Can, Can you? Cool. Yeah, cool. yeah. Right. Then we've got just some rising effects, really. Just add a bit of impact. Sub boom one is just. Layered, ink. layered ink with this. <laughs> Jesus, what's going on? There we go. Yeah, just nice little bits to add a little pizzazz to it, <laughs> if that's what you call it. Um, send wise, I haven't actually got any kind of like processing, no parallel compression, nothing like that. It's all just reverbs and delays. Uh, I tend to put them on sends just because it gives you a bit more control over what, what's going on. You can like EQ it a bit better. Um, and I also like to side chain my reverb to whatever it's coming from, depending on what it is. For mid bass, as example, uh, I will go for this one. Uh, it's side chained, so it gives you a nice little tail it doesn't like clash the sound of the mid bass with the reverb, which works really well for like longer mid basses, I suppose. Uh, you, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, to be honest. It's like one of them things, you know, I kind of automatically do it now. <laughs> um, but if I bring this right down, you might be able to hear it. It like ducks it. it it ducks the reverb out so it like gives a bit of space between them. Obviously, that's really aggressively done. Yeah, does that make sense to you guys? Oh, yep. <laughs> cool. Yep, sure does. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'll just have a quick look at my notes because I've kind of rushed through it all. Um, yeah, sometimes sometimes when I've finished a track, I've I've like added like I've used up all of my send channels. Um so sometimes when it comes to the mix down stage, I'll just delete all of them, all of all of the sends. And then it kind of becomes more apparent what the track needs at the time when it's written. Um because when you I start adding sends like straight away with reverb and stuff but obviously from when you first start writing it to when you finish writing it it's going to sound different so yeah I usually get rid of all the sends and then redo them all and sometimes you work you find out like <clears throat> some some 
uh, channels don't actually need what it, what it was there before. So yeah, there's there's just yeah, it's just a little tip for you if you find you've got tons of sends, um, like I usually do when I finish writing a track. Um, yeah. Is there anything else that you guys want to know? Or because I, I kind of found myself rushing through it because I was like, I don't want to run out of time. So nah, you're all good. You're all good. <laughs> but um, I don't know. You you was uh speaking about the bases earlier that you uh yeah. probably go a little bit deeper into the um <coughs> the mid range bases and how you kind mm-hmm. of put them together because that'd be quite interesting to see how you did that in wavetable and stuff. Yeah. Uh, also, I've also got the first version of it to show you guys. So cool, I'll I'll cool. go into the mid bases. Um, so yeah, I wrote this like over a year ago now, so I'll just give it a quick run through because what I exactly did and my exact thought process of it, if I'm honest with you, I can't, I can't really remember. So, um, usually I'm just sat there, like I say, flicking through wave tables. Um, yeah. And the track wasn't originally written like this, so at first of all it was like this burst that you're hearing like here this one was kind of like playing more of a melodic burst line um which i will show you um yeah so we've got two oscillators one of them's using like some kind of wobbly sign <laughs> don't really know how to explain it it kind of goes up in harmonics i'll see if, if it makes it sound awful Hold up. yeah so i suppose it like adds harmonics like i suppose that's why it's called harmonic series down here it hasn't got as many harmonics um then I've just got a triangle, which kind of sits underneath it, um, gives it a bit more grit. Um, if I wanted a bit more grit, probably go for a sawtooth. <laughs> um, then I've got it on the filter. I'll just see what the modulation is doing. Um, so I've actually, like, for the amp envelope, I've assigned it to the position on the wavetable here, and I've also assigned it to... The frequency so it moves with the amp envelope and then i've also got an lfo on it um which kind of just keeps it keeps opening it further keeps opening the filter further it's assigned to the filter um does that make sense <laughs> just checking in <laughs> Yeah, it's all good. It all makes sense. Yeah. I really that that bass um, when you was moving the um, I don't know what that is there on the right. Yeah, yeah he was moving table. something that's making it really growl. Yeah, the wave tables. He was scanning through it on oscillator one. Yeah, I mean that's just that's heavyweight. That's just yeah. really <laughs> really gnarly. I'm just going through my head now and thinking, oh, I could probably get some I mean, sick sick stuff going with that. Without all of the <laughs> processing on it, it probably doesn't sound like anything like that that's what it sounds like without all the processing yeah i think that's the thing as well you need to kind of whenever you start to create a base you know you 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 always have to leave room for the imagination with further processing because you know that base you probably heard that and you thought okay it's a it's a little bit sort of underwhelming you know let's yeah. say in a, in a in a respectful way yeah let's say you know let's be honest but you know that the processes you're going to add after that, it's gonna it's gonna come to life, and it's it's done just that. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So it's I mean, just... sometimes straight off the bat, I'll just add an overdrive. Well, just overdrive. So I... That's 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 one. That's my one of my go to distortion yeah, I love units. It. That that and trash <laughs> two. If I want to absolutely annihilate a sound beyond belief, then I'll go to trash two. But overdrive for the sort of distortion factor, of course. But but also. The way you can kind of automate it and control it, I love to sort of assign it to like, you know, like a, a macro and just yeah. mess with it and just, yeah, just bring it in and out. You can really bring a sound to life yeah. quite quickly with overdrive. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good little, good little distortion. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll, I'll, in fact, I'll go through this synth and I'll just add things 
um, as I go. It's not how I made it, but you can kind of then see how the, the sound changes. Um, so, yeah, without it, I'll just loop this here so I don't have to keep yeah, That was right on cue because Ollie, Ollie just dropped in the chat. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I don't know if you saw the... Um... Uh, comment in the chat saying, "Yeah, it'd be no. really interesting to see you turn turn them on one by one, sort of the stages. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's good timing. Yeah, it'd be interesting nice. to see the progression of uh, the plugins. Yeah, oh yeah. So first of all, I'll play it without it. You can't even hear it, but like barely <laughs> saturation just adds a little bit. You know." It's all experimenting, really. I wouldn't have added that at this point. You know, I've probably been switching things around when I first made this bass. Um, it's also worth noting I've got a little bit of drive on the filter frequency itself. Uh, on the filter, I mean, um, which can also help, like, beef it up a little bit. Now we're getting a little bit somewhere with it. <laughs> but what's really doing it is probably the trash. Um, it's not, I've not even done it with multiband. I've just slapped a load of distortion on it. Um, yeah, you will be able to do this other ways, but I think trash is really good for this. Like, it seems to catch like the frequencies really nicely, um, and it's got all these different uh, types of distortion. To be honest, I couldn't tell you what's going on here, but. It sounds good, so <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> no, trash, trash reminds me of um, a hardware unit that I use, a, a valve distortion unit called a culture vulture, where it reacts to the signal going into it. So yeah. because you're, the sound that you've got there already is quite quiet, when you add trash to it, 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 it kind of brings it to life. If that sound was, I don't know, 10 decibels louder and had some saturation, it was a bit more filled out, trash too would just go ballistic you know and it's, yeah. it's it's very sensitive to what you feed into it which is quite right. interesting actually um which which i only sort of figured out recently because I, I found myself whenever i was putting trash two on things i thought i can't even use that it just sounds yeah. mental <laughs> like it's just too much what's what's the point but then i thought oh, hold on so i turned the sounds down and then run it through it and oh, yeah. okay it kind of makes sense there's something to consider if you do use trash two um yeah Make, make sure the sound isn't already kind of in your face because trash too, it, it will you want to turn down your 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 speakers or your headphones because it will it could cause some damage yeah. to your ears. You have to be really careful um with it. But yeah, that's quite interesting there because that's just that's just proved it right there. Cause that sound was pretty much non-audible, right? Until yeah, yeah. <laughs> you turn trash on and then all of a sudden, bang, it's got some nice harmonics, nice tone there. And um yeah, it's a really, really interesting plug in the way it's been kind of developed actually. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Uh, it works really good with like other things. Like I do use like I was speaking with a few people and I was just like, do you know what? If my drums sound a bit naff, I just stick trash on it, <laughs> and it seems to like just work really nicely. Not every time, but if they're almost there, sometimes you just need a little bit of something. Just try a little bit of distortion and see how and see how that goes with it. It works as a really good saturation unit as well. I remember you saying that you add it to your drum bus to yeah, yeah. glue the drums together. And yeah, yeah that's, that's essentially what, you know, saturation is used for. You can use compression as well, but distortion, because you're kind of giving it that that sort of unified sort of coating, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? Of, of just a layer of saturation or distortion. If it's just done nicely, you can add some, some really nice dynamics to it as well. Um, but also glue it all together, which is kind of really important for drums, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then, like, after, that's pretty much all the distortion and all that saturation. And then it's just a compressor, which kind of... I really like H, H Compressor. It's Waves, Waves plugin. I use it on probably too much. I use, like, I've got a lot of compressors and I always just go straight to this one just because... I know how it sounds. I know what, how to like get around the controls enough to know what I want from it. Yeah, I'm exactly the same with the solid right. bus compressor for com compressor, not compressor, compressor. <laughs> <laughs> then to Sean Connery then for a second. Yeah. Um, but rest is soul and all that. Couldn't yeah, couldn't compressor. I use yeah the solid bus one. I've got I've got loads of different ones, but yeah, it's yeah. just very simple and it just. 
does the just does the job. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. And that's it with compression. You know, <laughs> you can have so many different ones, but you always gravitate towards the one that just does something. And yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, I really like love it. <laughs> and then uh I've just got it side chain so you can say I do side chain the majority of like the other channels to my kick and snare again it's just getting the drums punching through it might just be a little tiny bit but I find it just helps for me anyway it just helps to like help the drums come through because if I'm honest like drums are probably my weak spot where I like I do struggle with drums if I'm if I'm making a track the rest of it will sound great and then I'm always going back to the drums and trying to sort them out um so yeah if sometimes I just stick a lot of side chain compression on not loads but well it depends what it is um yeah so that's that's that bass uh would you like to hear what it sounded like before so you can get an idea of how it first came about or <laughs> yeah sure sure yeah. go for it do you think do you think you could take a look at the flute after as well if that's all right oh, the flute Someone... Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do that now. Um, cool. Yeah, that that'd be good because that's, that's that's a very very cool sound. I've got an I've got a suspicion that's a contact library sound. It is. It? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I can I can hear it. I just well I know that you use it anyway, so it's a bit of a telltale. But the um yeah, it's got that. It's honestly like contact instruments are absolutely sick for like percussion and you know sort of the orchestral side of things and all of that sort of yeah. stuff. It's really 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 good. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Um, I do love a good flute as well. <laughs> um, and then I've got I've got on here, I've got like a bit of saturation. Um, I really like using this on the J37, which is another Waves plugin. Uh, it's like emulating like tape, if you get what I mean. <laughs> tape. It's gone out of my head. But yeah, um, this kind of like makes it speed up and slow down I put it on a really slow rate and then just enough so you can hear it slightly detuning and I think it gives it like just a really nice sound oh, it's absolutely huge that on my screen um I'll really like exaggerate it so you can that's like really out <laughs> it kind of degrades the um quality of, yeah. of it to give it a bit a bit of grit and stuff yeah yeah, cool. so it just makes it. I don't know. I just like the sound of it when it goes a bit, mm. a bit off. Right. Okay. Now the zoom bar is in front of <laughs> me crossing this off. Oh. That happens to me all the time, and it absolutely <laughs> does my head in. It's all is there good. A way it does to get away with this bar. <laughs> it does. It does. It does disappear after a bit. It goes back up. But um, right. yeah, I do. I do exactly <laughs> what you've done. I just um, minimize the screen a bit, pull it down, and close what I need to close. But yeah. Um... <clears throat> do you know what? I'll just delete it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's always a way. There's always a way around it. Go back. If I go back, will it? Ah, oh, there we go. Sorted. See, we've um, learned we've learned a new Zoom hack tonight as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, good show, good show. Uh, again, I top trash. Now I don't know what's going on. It's not there. Ah, oh, it's because it's like a loaded preset, and I must have like deleted the preset or moved the preset. Um, so yeah, that's not doing anything at the minute. <laughs> Uh, compressor, equalizer, yeah, it's just a contact library. Oh, another thing I wanted to say as well if you're absolutely rubbish at music, um, like playing instruments or just theory and that, um, got a little trick for you. You might, you might already do it. Um, so, whenever I start a project, I'll kind of decide what key I want it in, which might change along the way. Um, but yeah, I've got this little folder and it's got your main like uh, scales in there. This is actually written in e, in e door harmonic, which is like kind of Eastern sounding. Um, but yeah, I'll do it on a on a new MIDI channel just to show you because it's super, it sorted me out. Because <laughs> I'd be going out of key because I don't really know anything about theory. Uh, Say so if I want it in a minor key. I'll load that in there and then I'll highlight them probably 
copy him over two or three octaves, so you've got a bit of range to play with. Got two octaves there. Um, select your root note, which is usually F, F for me. Um, then you've got your F minor scale, and you just bring it out of the, the clip, and then you can just start jotting notes about. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's pretty yeah. sick. <laughs> that's that's pretty sick. So so where did you Under. get them files? Did you did you make them files that you just yeah. dragged in? Is it oh you made them, right? Yeah, yeah. So I just saved like the MIDI file here, export MIDI clip. Oh so right. if, if you guys want them, um, I was gonna I can, say I expect I can upload uh, them for you. I expect to retransfer <laughs> to my email um yeah. after this session, please. <laughs> That's, yeah. that's that's awesome. That's really, really cool. Yeah, it's yeah. really handy. Um, because I'd be going out of key all the time. And like I wouldn't notice, but my friends who were like a bit ahead of it, like I like had the ears trained a bit better than me, would be like, Yeah, it's all right, but it's out of key. <laughs> so yeah, I'll send them over to you and anyone else if they if they want them. Yeah, please do. That's 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 awesome. That's great. Yeah, cool. Right. Anything else uh, you want me to look at? Or Somebody asked about, keen to know what processing you use to beef up your subs. Uh, I don't use the fat lot. Um, I basically just limit it. Um, so it's like I'll set the, set the ceiling to about minus 13, minus 14. Uh, then I'll just push it in so it's like getting no more than minus three gain reduction. Um, and that kind of like, it helps if you've got like a wobbly sub. Uh, it brings all the the peaks like to the same level. It keeps it consistent. The same thing with the drums. Um, it just keeps it consistent. Um, yeah, other than that, I might just do a bit of EQ on it. But it's mainly the limiting that that does it <laughs> I think and also forgotten another thing here um just to, it helps like uh I'll load up a, a sine wave and then you can see here I don't know if any of you use operator but these are basically like your harmonics or your partials Ableton column partials um then you want to play with these two here and it just slightly like warms up your sub it just gives it a little bit a little bit more than just a sine wave you know starting um, to let off the little nuggets now ain't you we need yeah. to carry on a bit longer i'm getting the little tricks coming out now so what if you if you apply uh, i'll take it you can draw other ones yeah. other other harmonics up 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 yeah. the frequency yeah of that sub and stuff yeah yeah wow. yeah so i just i used to draw okay. it used to look like something like that but mm. then i found if you if you kind of have it somewhere around there you know you can you can change it till you like and really but if you you don't want to like fully blast these two um because it'll it'll start taking away from it um but just having them a little bit just warms it up a bit and then i'll add another sign or a triangle and i'll just bring it up like oh hang on, i need a I'll just bring it up so you can just hear it. Like that's it with like loads. But it just helps it like boost it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's really, really cool. It's really cool. It's all about them little them little harmonics on subs. I, I actually saturate my sub, but I actually distort it sometimes as well. Yeah. I know it's a bit, it's a little bit naughty, but I actually use the, the, the sub oscillator in serum. Because yeah. I, I don't know, it just it just works for me, and then I'll just crank the distortion on it really high, but have the dry and wet down. Yeah, and it just uh, I'm getting that sort of overtones, but I've still got the weight there, and I usually just lace that underneath whatever mids yeah. I've got and stuff, and then sometimes I, I add some erosion to it as well, just to give it a bit of fizz and stuff. For me, yeah. as long as the weight is still there, as long as the weight is not compromised, then I'm happy to sort of sort of distort. The sine wave, let's say. Yeah, I'm always um, a bit scared to like do too much to miss up. To be honest, it should it should just be clean. Right. It should really be clean. But I, I I think for the stuff I make, it sort of works. Because sometimes if my sub is too clean, um, I find that it's a little bit detached from everything else because everything's yeah. so saturated and distorted and affected that 
the sub kind of sits and it kind of stands out. Whereas if I just sort of saturate it a bit or distort it a bit, kind of glues it to the other sound, you know. So I suppose it's yeah. just it's just kind of what what sort of stuff you're making, you know. But yeah, at times I do leave it really clean and just nice underneath. Yeah, uh, mid bass or something. Yeah, I need to experiment more with subs. <clears throat> to be honest, like, I, like I say, I'm too scared to um, lose the cleanliness of it. <laughs> of course, yeah. Well, it's really it's really important, especially for dubstep. Like it's very sub driven, like most underground electronic music is. But dubstep specifically is um, that sub and that impact and the relationship between the kick and the sub is it's imperative to to it being a big big track or especially big on a sound system you know I mean? yeah for sure uh is there anything else anyone wanted to ask while i've got the project open or some of the little scout through see if we see if there's anything oh, there. i have a look um, i have a little look <laughs> is there a much do you know what i feel like a grandma when i'm using zoom <laughs> i'm allowed to use this <laughs> it's all good Oh, okay. There was one thing that, um, that Ollie asked. Um, when we get to the end, can you show how you get the drums out of the rack, please? Do you ever right. like, so yeah, to, I, I mean, I, I would just drag it out. I'd drag it straight off the pad onto an audio lane, yeah. I suppose. That's how it would work, right? <clears throat> um, so Think, I'll but... do it on the hats because they're still in a, in a drum rack. So how are they? There we go. Right. So usually like, when I finished off my drums, they're all still in here. Still, mm. um, I need to. You need. You can't do it from from the drum pads. Um, you have to like go on that, go on the um, on the mixer, and then right click it if it lets me. Uh, extract chains, and then it'll pop up here. And yeah, that's that's how you do it. <laughs> There you go. Get as many times you want. There you go. Started. And then I'll like say if that was a, a kick and a snare, I'd just regroup it again so they're together. Uh, I'll just highlight it, control and G, and then they grouped again. Awesome. Keeps it nice and tidy. <laughs> it's all about group channels. I love it. I I, I tend to have my projects quite tidy. Um, I have to. When, you, when you're working with so many channels, groups are great, aren't they? For just, yeah, for sure. For, for tidiness and also for, for processing further, you know, on top of like, you know, individual channels and whatnot. Cool. I'm just um, having a little skim, skim through. Cool. I think before before we get stuck into more questions, um, if, you could, if you could just start loading up the chat with your questions, um, I'm just gonna take unless unless you've got anything else more you want to um, cover, Holly. I mean, I've got the first version of the track if people want to hear it um and see how it. it like kind of developed. So the reason yeah. why I changed it, I actually like managed to bust this tune out in a night because I got really, really peeved off with it. <laughs> um so it actually sounded like I'm just gonna play it. In fact, that's not the right one. Where is it? So it started off completely different. I kept the basses. I just deleted the bass lines, kept the intro, and just, yeah, basically re rewrote the, the bass lines. Because uh, mainly because the second half of this version, it just didn't flow right. It sounded a bit naff. I didn't like it. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes it's just better to just start with a clean slate or half clean slate and just retry it, you know? Yeah, here we go. <laughs> yeah, can you hear that? Is it is it coming through? No, it's not liking that. I can't hear it. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's there. It's there. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't hear it, so I'm just gonna have to let it play for you. <laughs> it's all good. I don't know why I can't hear it. Probably because you've got the Zoom driver on, Holly. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. I don't want to change anything with the settings just in case it, it buggers it up. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it. <laughs> Thank you. 
track now. So. <laughs> got, about, got about a minute left on it or 30 yeah. seconds, something yeah. like that. Yeah, but do you get what I mean? It sounds a bit, well, it sounds all right, but it's not like, I don't know. I, I just didn't like something about it. <laughs> It's okay. I, I do. I do like it, but I do think the the version that you've covered here is is it's got a, it's just got a lot more to it. I don't know. Some, yeah, some yeah. stuff just works there. But yeah, it's really cool. And it's um, it's funny sometimes. I I done a similar thing the other day. I, I was messing around with this loop for so long, and I just kept changing the bass, and I kept doing stuff. And I just sat there, and I just actually had a word with myself. I thought, get <laughs> get up there, and and I literally knocked something out in about. 40 minutes bang and it was just there yeah, it's parked yeah. up now and I know that that's going to be an idea I can finish state of mind is so 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 important like when yeah, you're yeah. when you're especially the more experienced you get your state of mind is so much more important as well because when you're at the beginner stage you're a little bit more kind of like innocent in your approach you, you just experiment you yeah. do stuff you're doing a lot of stuff by by accident um and yeah, state of mind. <laughs> oh, if I could, if I could bottle up them moments where I just <laughs> do what I should be doing, I'd have a lot more tunes finished. Like yeah, finish. yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. Yeah, that was awesome. There's um, there's quite a few people asking questions about yeah. beginner um stuff. I've got, I've got something cool. I want to, I want to share with people quickly. If you could continue to put your questions in the chat, we'll get to them. If, if I could just have a couple minutes of your time, I know there's a few beginners in here asking questions about about dubstep and how to get into it well if i could just share my screen for a second holly if that's if that's okay um yeah. i think you might have to if you can stop sharing uh, maybe i yeah. can take can i there take over i don't know i'll just stop it and then it let it starts out <laughs> all good i'll just share this quickly because i'm not sure if you're aware as i mentioned earlier we we here at education and base have um group mentoring programs that are genre specific we have beginners and intermediate programs. They're both separate. We have them for drum and bass as well, but obviously it's a dubstep session. So this is where, where Holly's a mentor, myself, Nomine, um, N-Type and Sim are also mentors on this program. We're currently enrolling for December, um, for a December start. It's a four month program. I'll drop this link in the chat and everything as well. And basically it's a four month program consisting of, of eight, live masterclass modules so you'll be on a session with other learners much like this environment now and we go through like the boot camp of how to make dubstep not only the music production side of things the philosophy you know the the creative mind state of how to really get you thinking like a producer is an amazing amazing program i'm not just saying that because i had a big hand in putting it together with the rest of the team but it truly is the boot camp in how to make dubstep, you know, and the intermediate program has the same amount of instructors, has the five that I've mentioned, but we've also added Boylan and Leon Switch into the mix as well. Now, you know, I can appreciate if you're a beginner, you won't be interested in the intermediate so much right now, but the way the intermediate one has been created, it feeds off, or sorry, the beginner one feeds into the intermediate one, like a natural progression. So yeah, anyway, that's... I, it's there, you know, for you yeah. for you to take a look at. But the um, these are the modules. I won't go too deep into the pages and stuff. Everything is on this web page. You can find these pages on the shop, on the education and base shop. But I'll drop the links in here anyway. And here are the instructors too. You know, as I said, it's got a lot of details. You also get a Discord server for peer to peer support for us to jump in and support as well. You get short homework tasks. You get um, an area of the website where the sessions are recorded so you can watch them back for a whole year and you get additional resources that we handpick for you. It's, it's music industry led because we're all music industry professionals, but we're also teachers as well. We have people that have master's degrees. So it has that academic sort of slant to it as well, which is so important to help you really embed the learning, you know, so I won't go too much more into it. It's, it is what it is. It's here. I'll drop the link in the chat. I'll also give you a 10% discount code as well. Uh, and that's exclusive to this session because you've taken the time to come and for us to say thank you. Um, so, yeah, that is pretty much all I wanted to just quickly share on that. And now we can get back to some questions. Yes. 
Uh, where are we going? Sorry, this chat keeps popping about everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... <laughs> I've lost so, it, do you know what is when when you share your screen I always like where's the chat I'm like, yeah, I'll yeah. find the chat and I'm kind of like in especially in the mentoring programs I'm I'm doing more of an interactive part of it where I'm asking questions and asking the learners to put stuff into the chat and I'm like I've just asked them to to answer questions and I can't find the chat and I'm like where is it yeah but I always always get there in the end so yeah, we found it we've got it we got it yeah <laughs> Yeah, I've just gone to the top just to make sure I, I can try and get everyone if there's something we haven't already answered that is anyway. Um, so I've got one from Josh saying, do you start with a template or work your way into groups as you progress? Um, I start with like a clean project every time, a fresh project. I don't, I don't really use templates very much. Um, I suppose they'll be quite helpful if you are starting out. Um, then you can like template for arrangement and then also like maybe templates for like your channels uh i understand why that might be helpful um for myself i don't i don't start with a template <laughs> i just kind of arrange things as i go um usually i'll like leave it for ages and it gets to a certain point where i'm like right i can't even make myself make my way around this project anymore i'm gonna have to arrange it somehow <laughs> uh yeah i hope that answers your question i use um, um i use i wouldn't say i use templates as such but i think building up sound banks of of stuff you know you can spend hours looking for a kick drum and sometimes you can keep doing it over and yeah. over again and you i don't know about you but i end up <laughs> going to the same kick drum i'll go through the same yeah, folder yeah. for 20 minutes <laughs> And end up with the same kick drum every yeah. single time. So now I've got into the use. I used to do it all the time, but so you just fall out of habits and stuff, which is just silly, really, because it just helps your workflow. Now, um, because Ableton's, you can kind of right click and, and add a color to it, which puts yeah. it in a little folder. And I've got a little folder of kick drums and snares, stuff like go to hits that give me a very good starting block. Now, yeah, I might not use them all the time and he's probably not recommended to use the same drums in every tune some artists do and it works but you know you might get a bit bored yourself so it's good to just have them as a starting block and then you can replace the sounds as you get into the tune mm -hmm. you know what that's cool now but i reckon i could get a better snare or you might want to layer the snare or you might want to change the kick drum and stuff like that so yeah i mean templates uh, they are they are good definitely and and i think they they definitely have their uses um yeah. But I think to to mix it up a little bit, it's always good to to just do stuff on the fly as well and just be creative. But I, I hear that for a beginner, I think, and, and that's if you are a beginner. Sorry if I'm I'm just assuming, but you, you know if you are, and and uh, templates are really good to give you um, a good understanding as well of of MIDI and where sounds are and sort of note placement and things like that. So it's got that sort of aspect to it as well. It gives you a good starting block to then develop learning the process. And then also replace stuff. And then in the end, you'll find that, yeah, you just you just be free flowing and you just do stuff second nature. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, I'm just looking through the chat again. Um, do you mix your track as you go along or separately at the end? Um, I do little bits like compression and EQ, um, just so it tidies it up a bit. Um, but I usually try and teach it, uh, treat it separately. Uh, so once I've finished a track, uh, at whatever point I'm like, I think I've finished, because it's always one of them, uh, I'll like completely take down every channel um, to, to like, so you can't hear anything. I'll start mix it by mixing the, the drums and the sub, so they're like at a nice level, they've got a nice balance, because I feel like that's like, the foundation of your track um so if they're they've got a good balance then the rest is kind of just like add-ons not not um literally but like you know what i mean um then i'll probably start mixing in the mid verses but i find it easier to just bring everything completely down um just because if otherwise i'm just find myself i'm like going to and throwing too much um it just seems to not work well with my brain. So 
starting from zero and then building up seems to work best for me. Um, but yeah, I might go back through all the EQs and just check, check through everything. Um, but I will do a little bit of EQ and compression along the way. Mm, uh, I do, I do it in stages as well. I do mostly, mostly subtractive EQ to start with. That's that's on yeah. every channel. I go in. I, I kind of. I make sure that all of the horrible little frequencies that I, that I think are horrible are removed from sounds um, because that's that's balanced straight away. Do you know what I mean? And I find yeah. that if I take the time to really go into that surgically, it might even stop me from having to use compressors and all that stuff and kind of, I don't know, like not say pointlessly using things because, you know, I think that I should be and stuff, but... I subtractive EQ is such a big part of it for me. I, I spend a lot of time surgically removed. Probably one one studio session will be going through 30, 40 channels and just removing little resonant frequencies because all of that builds up and can create um quite hard work when it gets to the I'd just say the, the mastering side of things. But yeah, when you when you're going with your final mix, you might be sort of undercutting it a bit in the way where you won't be getting the best that you can out of the mix because it only takes certain little frequencies or a build up of certain little horrible frequencies in a certain area of the frequency spectrum to um kind of mess with your mix you know so that's something i do but i do i love mixing mix i spend probably most of my time on the track mixing it down i absolutely love yeah. <laughs> experimenting and squeezing it trying to get that bit more out of it a bit more coloration hit it into the limiter a bit more and stuff. Cause I, I kind of mix stroke mastering at the same time. And uh, the mixing process is all done with the mastering process in mind. So it's something that I geek out on quite heavily, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it's really important because a mix down can make or break a track. I think, you know, yeah, you can have the best sure. idea in the world if it's not delivered properly. Um, you know, it's not, it's not, yeah, it's not delivered properly. It's not going to sound as good as it can. Let's not yeah. say it's going to sound bad, but it could sound maybe better. You know, who knows? It'll come with time, though, if you are just beginning. Like... <laughs> totally. And it's, it's all about the amount of hours you put in and you keep learning. I still, to the, I've learned a few things tonight from Holly. You know, I've been, in the, I've been producing about 20 years, over 20 years. You know, I learn every single day. And that's one thing that, you have to be ready to do as a music producer. Like whether you use everything that you learn is different. You know, you're not going to use everything you learn in one tune. Of course not. It sounds mental. Do you know what I mean? But having all that knowledge there and being open to it is, um, that's the most important part. And the hours that you put in might take a lot of sacrifices. You know, I don't watch a lot of TV. I don't watch any TV. I watch football. That's my only little thing that I, that I watch. But any time that I get, around work, around life, around my daughter and stuff. It's in a studio. It's in a studio with my lamp on, close the door, let's geek out, you know. And that's that's how I've pretty much lived my life. And I'm a bit of a hermit and I don't go <laughs> anywhere. Who do I support? Tottenham Hotspur. Proud. Tottenham Hotspur <laughs> Football Club. Someone just asked in the chat. Is that Frankie? Lame. Right, Frankie, you're, you're banned. Let me just kick Frankie out of the chat quickly. I'm joking. <laughs> All good. Okay, so if we um if we haven't got any more questions, I think we can we can probably wrap this up. Um, Holly, have you got anything you'd um, like to add? Famous last words or anything? Not famous. Famous last words for this <laughs> session. You're not gonna, you know, you you'll be here tomorrow. You know, yeah. Yeah. Famous I last think, words for this session. I think there is a couple more questions. So if you do, oh want, yeah, yeah. Because I know it's running. I know we're running out of time. No, nah, no, nah, it's cool. So. It's cool. No, nah, I didn't. I didn't actually see the question. Oh, is so, it? Yeah, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm cool. like just reading through, like. Yeah, go for it. Chat. Um, I'll try and get through them quickly, but I'm you know. Good. All good. <laughs> um, so do you have any tips when you dubstep produce in terms of what helps you get started and the most helpful resources that helps you understand dubstep processes? Um, so when I first started making music, I remember the first time I opened Fruit Loops and I was like, what the actual, what is this? <laughs> I didn't have a clue. I was like... I have no idea what is going on here, but we'll 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 have an explore of it. Um, I didn't actually make dubstep before. I kind of made I made like 
all kinds of stuff with the MB and dubstep. Um, but it was kind of just experimenting for a good three years at least. Um, yeah, I didn't, I'm also a little bit of a hermit. So instead when I, when I was in school, I wouldn't go out and meet people. I'd just sit on my computer and look around programs um, and watch YouTube videos. Uh, further down the line, I'd say learning off other people is really important. Like I've been to college and uni, but I've got to say like I've learned most things from just watching other people and asking them stuff. Um, yeah, that's like really important. If there's no one around you that makes music, we've got the internet now. So, you know, just don't be afraid to ask people. Um, and we've got education and base. That you and we've got education to. and base. Yeah, we have. <laughs> that's where you want to come to, to get educated. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, listen, listen to Rafi. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? It's it's so so true. I've had I've had a few people say that that they've gone to universities and stuff, and yes, they've learned a lot. But it's when they've just got in the zone themselves and working with other people, collaborating is um, a fantastic way to see how other people work. Just sit in yeah. the studio with them, you know, even if it's remotely, just to sit in the studio with them and just watch how people approach things is absolutely invaluable. It really is. Videos. yeah for sure I just used to sit and just pick my mate's brains I'd just be like how are you doing that and I, I'd probably mm. most of the time I wouldn't really know what he was talking about but eventually it kind of sinks in with you practicing it and yeah. now it's just like second nature doing the stuff that I got taught by a friend so mm. yeah other people um another question any tips for variation in the composition I tend to get one eight bar loop down and struggle to get variety. Um, this is something that I still struggle with. Um, I'd say the best way to get out of it is just not to go over and over the same loop. If you're struggling with it, go and try something else for a bit, come back to it and maybe add in what you've you've just made. Like if, if you're stuck on an eight bar loop, yeah, just go and do something else for a little bit. And maybe try and incorporate, like, go and try and make some synths for a bit. Incorporate them synths. Do you know what? It's you... quite, it's quite interesting. Sorry, sorry. Go on, Holly. Sorry. I just oh no. <laughs> if you are, if you find, I can't remember what, what I was gonna say. Um. Yeah, it was. You, you, you carry on. It might come back. It come back. <laughs> sorry, yeah. I just jumped. <laughs> I thought, right. I thought you'd finish. I was just gonna add that. Um. Wow, I think I've actually forgotten what I was gonna say now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. you, do you know what? It's it's so easy to listen to a loop over and over and over and over again. It's actually a sick loop, but you've listened to it so much that you think, Ugh, I don't like it. Step away from it. Whatever you do, don't delete it. Just save it, walk away, come back, press play. If you're still not into it, then you're probably not into it. But there's times when I've gone back to the computer and thought, actually, this is pretty sick. And it will, it will just hear exactly what you need to do, that you need to just move a bass over or move something and yeah. click. It just works and you're like, right. But yeah, just uh, sound, sound designing is a great way. Just, just, open up a synth, open up a wavetable, what, whatever you want to use and just start making some cool sounds and it will start flowing and something will pop up, you know? Yeah, that's pretty much like what I was going to say. Like, go, go, if you can't, if you like hitting a brick wall completely, just go away from it for a bit. Go do something else, come back to it, see what you're thinking when you come back to it. Um, exactly, yeah. Just having a quick flick through. Um, don't think I think that might be all the questions, you know. Cool. Okay, dokie. So, yeah, I think. Wicked. <laughs> bang on, bang on time for once. See, if this was me or Andrew doing this session, we'd only just be halfway through, wouldn't we, mate? <laughs> <laughs> we're like telling everyone it's going to go on to at least nine o'clock because we. Yeah. Uh, we we're still, we're been... still be on the intro, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what would be happening. We we laugh about it, but we've lost many a night. It's uh yeah, we're like oh, we we have to we have to get these sessions down a bit. That's why now we we split up on sessions. We'll do one session each rather than together. Because if we do sessions together, oh, you better uh, you better cancel yeah. any plans you've got for the evening. You should say. start a podcast. Yeah, well, our podcast conversations <laughs> are a podcast. Our podcast. Um, yeah, sorry, go on. Sorry, Holly. Just want to say quickly that was amazing. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks for having us. I enjoyed it, actually. I yes, was a bit scared same. at first, but no, it was all right. 
Yeah, I, I really, <laughs> really enjoyed it as well. It was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, awesome stuff. Wow, okay, so I suppose we will uh, say our farewells. And uh, I want to thank everyone for locking in. It's been, uh, it's been amazing. And I always know it's been yeah. amazing because time's gone really quickly and all of a sudden we're at the end of the session. And um, yeah, really great work, Holly. I do, I, I do feel that we only scratched the surface with some of them tips and tricks, though. So uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to have a chat about that and see if we can work something out to uh, lift the lid on a few more bits because, um, yeah, that was uh, some really cool tricks. Don't, don't forget to send me them, them MIDI files as well. Oh, yeah, I'll really, do it right now. We'll really well. handy. Um, <laughs> cool. Okay, so... Once again, thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, thank you. And um, yeah, feel free to hit me up. I've, I've dropped an email in there for the group mentoring program. If anyone's interested, any questions, just give me a shout. I'll be happy to answer them. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much. And keep an eye out for more events as well. We have plenty more in the pipeline. And um, yeah, all good. Wicked. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Hope to see you at some point. Maybe on the mentor, I might not know. I can't even talk now. Um, you will. You'll be seeing maybe a lot on the more. mentoring program. You'll be seeing a lot, <laughs> a lot more of Nasha in the uh, in the education and base realms for sure. Okay. Send me some music, please, Holly. I would have, I would have put something like that on Nominate Sound that track right there. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh is it? Send me some I'll music. send some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked. Get it over. <laughs> Get it over. Yeah, that would that be amazing release on there yeah. for sure. Nice. Big up. Thanks yeah, a lot. Nice one. Big up. Cheers, nice guys. See you, you later. Nice Good. <laughs> In a bit.